So what about the, the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception? Like, where do we even get the language of Immaculate if, you know, um, the New Testament itself doesn't use that with reference to Mary? Well, in this case, there's one other paragraph in the Catechism that it can be helpful, and I'll end with this. It goes back to the second reading for today, the reading from the letter to the Ephesians, which, as we saw, talked about those of us who are in the church being chosen by God to be blameless and to be holy before God. And if you look in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 490, it actually quotes that very text from the letter to the Ephesians with reference to Mary's immaculate conception. So let's, let's look at that together. Quote, To become the mother of the Savior, Mary was enriched by God with gifts appropriate to such a role. The angel Gabriel, at the moment of her annunciation, salutes her as full of grace. Luke chapter 1, verse 28. In fact, in order for Mary to be able to give the free assent of her faith to the announcement of her vocation, it was necessary she be wholly born by God's grace. Through the centuries, the church has become ever more aware that Mary, full of grace through God, was redeemed from the moment of her conception. That is what the dogma of the Immaculate Conception confesses, as Pope Pius IX proclaimed in 1854. The Father blessed Mary more than any other created person, quote, in Christ, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, and chose her, quote, in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. Ephesians 1, 3-4. And that's from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 490 and 494. Okay, so did you see what the church just did? It took what Paul says about the church being given the grace to be blameless or immaculate and applies it to Mary as reality, what she is, the first Christian, right, at the moment of the Annunciation. So those two scriptural texts, the Annunciation, will, the angel greets Mary as full of grace, and then Ephesians chapter 1, which describes the, the church as immaculate through God's grace, applies both those texts to Mary as the living embodiment of what it means to be a Christian, uh, as a kind of living icon of the church itself, holy and blameless in the eyes of Christ, not through our own efforts, but through God's grace and through the love of Christ. So, um, isn't that fascinating? The very passages we look at today uh, for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, Genesis 3, Luke chapter 1, and Ephesians 1, are the three texts cited by the Catechism to explain the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception. It's almost as if the church knows what these passages mean and has chosen them very deliberately in order to lay out this mystery of her Immaculate Conception for us, the mystery of Mary as the new Eve.